Hi everyone, this is the material handling challenge that we are going to attempt to solve today. So we have this conveyor belt, a bunch of bottles, pieces of broken glass, and the task is to remove the broken glass without tipping the bottles over. And there are a number of different ways that co we could approach this challenge. Probably the thing that we're going to try to do today is to add a second conveyor belt after the first one and then design a bridge between the two. And we're going to try to design the bridge in such a way that it lets the bottles pass across while filtering out the debris from the material flow. And as you can see, and as you can imagine, this is not a trivial task. So the, the first idea that comes to mind to me in a way is to add a sawtooth edge here and a bunch of holes in the plate. So let's see how that works. Looks pretty good so far. Maybe we solved it right away, we'll see. Okay, there we have a piece of glass that made it across. That's definitely not what we want. Let's look at it in slow motion and see if we can make more sense of what is happening here. So remember that uh, the material is moving quite quickly actually. We're watching most of these sequences in slow motion. So the, the sheer speed of it all makes it quite easy for the debris to just fly across these openings. So uh, if we make the openings bigger, then we're going to reduce that risk. But as you see right here, it can introduce new problems into this solution. So a big opening means that it's easier for our bottles to trip on that opening. But at the same time, a big opening means that debris will more easily be removed, which is a good thing. So one potential compromise or way around this that I'm thinking of would be to maintain the size of the openings, but orient them a little differently, rotate them a few degrees. And the idea here would be to remove the opening distance in the direction of the material flow while maintaining the, the sheer size of the openings. And this seems to work quite well. However, there's a piece of glass there that was able to make it across. Not good. Let's try one more time with a slight modification. Hmm. Look at that one in the middle of the flow hidden behind bottles right now, but there we see it, it made it through. Let's see if we can understand what is going on here. So I think it was clear there that the piece of debris was not moving along a straight line. It was almost following a, a zigzag motion and it was supported by the bottles in the flow. So the bottles were guiding it through the hoops here. And this is yet another example of, you know, everything that can go wrong will eventually go wrong. And we seem to be in this kind of infinite loop of conflicting criteria here. If we make it possible, or easier for the debris to get across, then the bottles will tip over and vice versa. 
And when you find yourself in this type of situation where you have conflicting criteria, it is easy to get it, get sucked into this loop of adding more details, adding more features here and there, there to try to make this inherently perhaps not ideal solution work anyway. And you really don't want this to spiral because it can consume a lot of your time to do it. And the final solution might be a bit of a monster in terms of complexity and production costs. So what I'm doing now is to scrap the concept that I had before and start from a clean slate, basically. So the idea here is to add as much, you know, holes and, and openings, open spaces as possible in this bridge while having a core structure that will help the bottles uh, traverse across it. And this new concept seems to work quite well thus far. So there's no way I think that the uh, debris can make it across. And the bottle seems to be doing quite all right, except there. If we take a closer look at this issue, we realize that it's tripping on that edge. So let's see if we can do something about that. Perhaps just remove it altogether. Looking good, as it always does for a while. And there, it tips over like a log. And yet again, we have the situation of conflicting requirements. So that edge caused bottles to trip over in certain situations, but in other situations, it provided support to keep the bottles upright. So let's add a new edge there that goes across, but a little further upstream this time. My hoping is that this new placement of the edge will provide support without tripping the bottles. And although the bottles make it across with this iteration, some of them almost tip over right when they get off the bridge. I wanna try to do something about that. And I'm thinking maybe I can make that plateau a little wider so that it provides more support right when they get off. This seems to work well, and I'm feeling pretty hopeful at, at this point. Obviously, this needs much more testing, um, and the goal is always to try to achieve a fundamentally robust solution. I'm going to let this simulation run for a bit longer if you want to stick around and see if you can spot any more issues with it. And this is also a place where you might want to subscribe and like the video. If you're interested in watching more problem solving examples like this one, then you can follow the link presented now. I'll talk to you soon again. Goodbye.